Welcome to Timbrea Faith University. My name is Angela Stewart, and I will be teaching our lesson on this week. The title of our lesson is Miracles on Malta. Let us pray. God, we thank you for this day. God, I pray that, O oh, Heavenly Father, as I studied this lesson, O oh, Heavenly Father, that it would bless someone along the way of this week, O oh, Heavenly Father, and they would know that regardless of what they might be going through, regardless of each and every situation we go through, God, we know, O oh, Heavenly Father, as Christians, it's a part of your plan, and you have a great outcome in the midst of we would just hold on in the name of Jesus. I pray, O oh, Heavenly Father, that this lesson will be shared amongst others in the name of Jesus that's within our circle, Heavenly Father, and that they will share it with someone else, God. This is my prayer in the mighty and wonderful name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Again, the title of our lesson is Miracles on Malta. And the time of action of our lesson today was between 59 and 60, which took place at Malta. I will read our lesson text in its entirety, and then we will expand on each verse in each section of our lesson. And the lesson uh, text is Acts 28, verses 1 through 10, and it reads, And when they were escaped, then they knew that the island were called Melita, and the barbarous people showed us no little kindness for they kindled a fire and received us every one because the present rain and because of the cold. And when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, there, there came a viper out of the heat and fastened on his hand. And when the barbarians saw the venomous beast hang on his hand, they said among themselves, no doubt that this man is a murderer whom, though he hath escaped the sea, yet the vengeance suffered not to live. And he shook off the beast into the fire and felt no harm. How bid they looked when he should have swollen or fallen down dead suddenly, but after they had looked a great while and saw no harm come to him, they changed their minds and said that he was a God. In the same quarters were possessions of the chief man of the island, whose name was Publius, who received us and lodged us three days courteously. And it came to pass that the father of Publius lay sick of a fever and of a bloody flux to whom Paul entered in and prayed and laid his hands on him and healed him. So when this was done, others also which had diseases in the island came and were healed, who also honored us with many honors, and when we departed, they laded us with such things as were necessary. Amen. Our lesson text today is broken down into three sections. The first section that we will go over is host hostility, hospitality, excuse me, extended. Acts 28 verses 1 and 2. And our second miracle was miracles observed, which is verses twenty chapter twenty eight verses three through six. And our final section is the miracles performed, and that's going to be coming from Acts twenty eight verses seven through ten. I will now give an introduction of our lesson as. Uh, and as Christians, we become used to serving Christ in the ordinary routines of life. At some point, we all may wonder what it is God is doing in our lives, especially when we find ourselves in some strange or unknown circumstances. We become serious. When we become serious about our walk with him, 
We thank him for our daily necessities. We read our Bibles daily and we worship often with others in the house. In this week's lesson, we learned that Paul and his companions found themselves shipwrecked on an unknown island, which they later learned that it was Melita or Malta. On this island where they were shipwrecked, Paul continued to serve others through his faith. We will go over now and read each verse one by one, and then we will expand on them. Here at section one again deals with the hospitality extended, which comes from verses one and two. Here in verse one, it reads, and when they were escaped, they knew that the island was called Melita. Here we, we see that Luke was with Paul on this journey. And it tells us that after they all had escaped or made it safely to shore, they realized that the island was called Melita, but today it is known as Malta. It is interesting that the name of this Melita means refuge and safety for the voyagers. Here in verse 2, it reads, and the, barbar and the barbarous people showed us no little kindness, for they kindled a fire and received us every one because the present rain and because of the cold. Here, the term barbarous people or barbarians does not refer to savages. It was known, it was used by both the Greeks and the Romans to describe any people who were not Greeks or Romans and who spoke a dialect that was unknown to them. They proved to be hospitable to the stranded travelers. They showed these castaways kindness when they kindled or made a fire for them and received or welcome all the 276 castaways. They appreciated the fire because of the cold, rainy weather, even though the storm was over, but it still kept raining and it was cold. And since it was close to winter, according to Acts 27, nine through 12, they had just came ashore through the frigid waters. Even though these islanders were pagans or idol worshipers, they showed human kindness that even sometimes Christians don't show. Here in Acts 28, 3 through 6, it deals with miracles is observed. Verse 3 reads, And when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, there came a viper out of the heat and fastened on his hand. And here we see that God has something special in mind for Paul. We know that nothing happens to Christians without God's planning something great. Even though the difficult, even through the difficult times, Paul learned that there was a chance for him to minister right around the corner. He knew that regardless of what had happened to him, it was a chance for him to minister. And in verse four, it reads, when the barbarians saw the venomous beast hang on his hand, they said among themselves, no doubt this man is a murderer whom though he hath escaped the sea, Yet the vengeance suffered not to live. And here in this verse, these superstitious barbarians knew nothing about the one true God. So they believe that when bad things happen, it was a sign that God was angry. And when, and when good things happen, it was a sign that God was happy. 
Amen. In verse 5, it reads, And he shook off the beast into the fire and felt no harm. Here we see that Paul's survival was due to a divine protection, just as he and his comrades had been protected during the storm. God honors the faith of his people by faithfully delivering them from their trials or giving them strength in the midst of them. And that's what he do to us today. He give us strength even in the midst of our hardship. God has showed his power and he, he reassured Paul by preserving him during the storm. God protected Paul from the poisonous snake and he reassured him that he would bring him to safely to Rome. God demonstrated his power to both the islanders and the castaways in order to create saving faith in them. He wanted to show them that, you know, who he was. Also, uh, in verse six, it reads, how big they look when he showed his, when he should have swollen or fallen down dead suddenly. But after they had looked a great deal, a great while, and saw no harm come to him, they changed their minds and said that he was a God. And here in this verse 6, we are not told how long they had watched Paul, only that it was a great while. They knew that eventually the snake bite would take a toll on him and they thought that he was going to die. After watching for a while or a long period of time, they saw no harm come to him. So, and didn't, um, nothing happen to him, which Paul had caused the islanders to rethink and about their conclusion and their, and they changed their minds about Paul. So the islanders no longer thought that he was a murderer. And that was in uh, verse four, we read that. Instead, they began to say again that he was a God. We will go over the third section of our lesson, which deals with miracles performed. In verse seven, it reads, in the same quarters, were possessions of the chief man of the island whose name was Publius, who received us and lodged us for three days courteously. And here in verse seven, we uh, um, here in verse seven, the word received us means that Publius welcomed Paul and his companions, who included Luke the soldiers, the sailors, and even other prisoners. Publius had provided them with food and hospitality for three days. They all stayed with Publius for the three days until they could find somewhere else to stay because to stay on the island, I'm sorry, three months according to Acts 28 and 11. Here in verse 8, it reads, And it came to pass that the father of Publius lay sick of a fever and a bloody flutes, to whom Paul entered, and he prayed and laid hands on him, and he was healed. Here in ver uh, and healed him, excuse me. Here in verse 8, we see that earlier the islanders called Paul a god, but his praying made it clear that he depended on a deity himself. The healing along with God's protection of Paul from the snake's bite was a quick fulfillment of Jesus' promise, which we see that in Mark 16 and 18 when he told his followers that they would take a serpent and lay. 
hands on the sick and they shall recover. Here in verse 9, it reads, So when this was done, others also which had diseases in the island came and were healed. Here in verse 9, we see that after Publus' father was healed, many others brought their sickness to Paul and they were also healed. Here the word healed is a different uh, is different from the one used of Publus' father. It's a general term indicating that many of the other people, they were cared, uh, they were treated, they was cured or healed. So the word healed in this verse may indicate that not all the cures were, were miraculous it was mistaken for them to think that the miracles would always happen when the gospel was preached. In the book of Acts, many miracles were recorded, but those miracles were needed to confirm Christ's message uh, to many who strongly were pagan or idol-worshipping people. Here in our final verse 10, it reads, Who also honored us with many honors. And when we departed, they laded us with such things as were necessary. Here in our final verse, the words they laded us means they placed on board, which in other words, the people of Malta put on their ship all that they would need for the rest of the journey. This was God's way of providing for all 276 men because of one man's faith, which was Paul's faith. What could have been a bleak chapter, Paul's life became a time of fulfillment for him and blessings for others. It confirmed for him in all circumstances and that all things work together for the good to them that love God. And you can find that in Romans 8 and 28. And in my conclusion of our lesson today, this lesson amongst other things, in this week's lesson, it should teach us that when we are faithful during the difficult times in our lives, that God often opens doors for us to minister to others or to serve others. So uh, the next time that we're wondering what is God doing in our lives, he just might be setting the stage for someone else's next miracle. So we have to understand that what we've been through and we use it as a testimony. It can bless someone else that might be going through what we've been through and feel that they can't make it. But when they hear our testimony and know how God brought us out, he's the same God today that will bring them out. So we cannot be ashamed of what we've been through. We have to allow it to be a blessing to someone else because we don't want anyone to fall because we keep our um, things that we've been brought out of hitting. So let's just be a blessing to someone else so that they can come out of what they've been through. Because Paul was always prepared in arm um, and uh, with his faith, he was ready when God wanted to use him. Like I say, that's what we must be ready. We must be uh, ready to pray for someone else, not be fearful to pray for them. Because our prayer could just be the healing that they're waiting on mentally that they can come out. So however God wants to use us, let us, you know, do what he has called us to do. Our faithfulness, again, it will open doors, oh, Heavenly Father, so we can minister to them in the name of Jesus. Because that's that opportunity that God gives us in the name of Jesus. Uh, our lives. Uh, even if we're going through a shipwreck, 
we could let them know what we're going through. In the name of Jesus, let us pray. God, I want to thank you for this lesson, O oh Heavenly Father. God, let us uh, be like Paul was, God. God, let us be a blessing to all that we come in contact, God. We don't want nothing, O oh Heavenly Father, to hinder someone else from coming out of what they might be going through, God. So, God, I ask that you would just use us, God. Give us strength, O oh Heavenly Father. Enlarge our territory, O oh Heavenly Father, that we will walk, O oh Heavenly Father, according to where you have for us to do, O oh Heavenly Father, that we will always be a light, O oh Heavenly Father, into someone else's darkness, God. So, God, I thank you, O oh Heavenly Father, for this opportunity that my Bishop P.J. Edmund gave unto me, O oh Heavenly Father. I thank you, O oh Heavenly Father, that he trusts me, O oh Heavenly Father, from what we've been taught, O oh Heavenly Father, that we can be a blessing to someone else, God. So, God, I thank you, O oh Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, God, I pray, O oh Heavenly Father, that this lesson will bless someone else and that they will be a blessing, O oh Heavenly Father, to all that they may come in contact with, God. In the name of Jesus, and I pray that you all will meet us back online on next week in the name of Jesus for a powerful lesson that's ahead. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Be blessed.